So we've used um, differentiation to um, find turning points. Um, we've used differentiation to find the equations of tangents and normals. And to be honest, that's pretty much it um, with differentiation. There is one extra thing which we're going to cover today, and that is the idea of an increasing and a decreasing function. Um, but it's actually nothing new, um, although it does involve a little bit of inequality work, which is always good to revise. Um, so here's a, a cubic function, um, and, and I hope you are able to, uh, to understand that uh, it is increasing here up to that turning point, isn't it? So it is an increasing function for that section there because the value of y as x gets bigger is getting bigger. And it's also increasing in this section here. Um, and then from this turning point, from this maximum to this minimum, it's a decreasing function. So um, some functions are um, a mixture of increasing and decreasing. Uh, obviously, a parabola x squared is going to be um, a bit of increasing and a bit of decreasing. So decreasing followed by increasing, increasing followed by decreasing. Um, some functions are always increasing. So you could get a function that looks like that. And some functions are always decreasing. And, and yeah, we're always moving um, to the right. So, um, you know, if as x gets bigger, the graph is going up, it's increasing and down is decreasing. Um, how can we tell if it's increasing or decreasing without looking at it on the um, uh, looking at a graph of it? Well, hopefully you can see an increasing function has a positive gradient. Decreasing function has a negative gradient. So a function is increasing when we can either say dy by dx is greater than zero or when f dash of x is greater than zero. Those two notations mean exactly the same thing. And a function is decreasing when the gradient is less than zero, or the gradient is negative. And of course, when the gradient is zero, it is neither increasing or decreasing. That is a turning point. Um, and um, so, in fact, you know, we can use turning points to, to answer questions about increasing and decreasing functions. So let's look at a, a simple example. Um, so I want to ascertain when this function here is increasing or decreasing. Um, so let's firstly use turning points. OK, I know what shape this is. It's an unhappy quadratic, so it's like that. So I know that its turning point is going to be a maximum. And I know up to that point it will be increasing and after that point it will be decreasing. So go on. See if you can locate the turning point and therefore tell me when it's increasing and decreasing. Pause and have a go. So differentiating, minus 3x becomes minus 3, multiplied by the power, reduce the power by 1, so we get this. Let's find the turning point by asking when does that equal 0. I multiplied everything by minus 1, took away 3, I've got minus 3 quarters. Now I'm not bothered about the coordinates, so I didn't go back to the original function and work out the y value. Could have done, could have done, because actually answers to these increasing and decreasing questions will only be given in terms of x values. So I, you know, I don't know what the y value here is, but I know it's at x is minus 3 quarters. So before that, it's an increasing function. So it's increasing when x is less than minus 3 quarters and decreasing after that. And of course, if it was a a normal quadratic, a happy quadratic, it would be the other way around, wouldn't it? It would be decreasing up to the turning point and increasing after. So that approach, you know, assumes you know something about the graph. So that's my um, analysis of this problem using turning points. But we can do it another way. Um, I've got my dy by dx or my f dash of x here. So I know that that function is increasing um, when that is greater than zero. So I can just solve it like an inequality. So I could have, I don't know, added three to both sides. 
and divided both sides by minus 4. Remember, when you divide an inequality by a negative number, you have to flip the sign. So it's increasing when um, when x is less than three quarters. Now, therefore, it must be decreasing everywhere else. Um, and of course, don't forget we've got, so that's the sort of inequality approach. Um, and don't forget, you've got your third option, which is to sketch it on your calculator. So, you know, I've got my um, graph function, delete that from the other day. So my function is uh, 16 minus 3x minus 2x squared. And I can use the cursor just to... And so, you know, I can g-solve and that's a maximum. Find the location of the maximum. Um, so here's another function, a cubic this time. We're asked to find when it's increasing and when it's decreasing. Um, when I know about the rough shape of the graph, and I do know about this one, it's a happy cubic, I'm always going to use turning points rather than inequalities. Um, so go on, see if you can locate the turning points. Um, we, we know that that's going to be a maximum, that's going to be a minimum, but why don't we practice doing the whole um, second differential thing just to confirm that, and then make a clear statement about when it's increasing and when it's decreasing. Um, no need to work out the y values, because as we say, we're not actually being asked to find the turning points, we're just using it as a way of working out when it's increasing or decreasing. Pause and have a go. So, I mean, you can use your calculator, but I just always, I like to keep my factorising skills uh, fresh. So I got uh, 5 and minus 1 as my two uh, turning points, and I differentiated again, 6x minus 12, and just substituted the values of the turning points in, 5 and minus 1. Didn't worry about the actual value, just whether it's positive or negative. So it confirms what I knew all along, that the first turning point, that's minus 1, would be a maximum followed by minimum and, and so you know we've got sort of um, that's minus one and that sorry that's minus one and that's five we didn't bother working out the y values but we now know that the function is increasing when x is less than minus one and greater than five and it's decreasing in between the two. So we can use a single statement, can't we, to do that? Remember, it's the signs are always facing the same way when you've got a, a sandwich and then you've got a tail there. Um, let's just quickly do it using inequalities just to show that it is possible to use inequalities. And sometimes inequalities are necessary. Um, so here I'm going to... Uh, um, get my same dy by dx and um, I'm going to ask when is it increasing because when it's not increasing it's going to be decreasing apart from when it's turning points so when is it increasing I know that's when the gradient is greater than zero so it's very similar here isn't it so I'm just Same solutions. You've just got to then remember that, um, you know, we're actually not talking about a cubic anymore. Now we're talking about a quadratic and asking when is that quadratic greater than zero? It's a normal quadratic. And we've just shown that it's got roots at minus one and five. So um, this is the thing about using inequalities, isn't it? We have to sort of forget the original function and we're now just looking at this function, but we get the same answer. So it's increasing greater than zero. So that's when it's above. So it's less than minus one and greater than five. And it's decreasing between minus one and five. So we get the same answer as we did using turning points, using inequalities. Okay. Let's answer a slightly different question relating to a cubic. 
So here's a slightly different question, still a cubic, but this time I've got to show that not when is it increasing, when is it decreasing, but I've got to show it's always increasing. So it's always increasing when the gradient, if the gradient is greater than zero. So I've got to show that it is always greater than zero. Now the gradient is 3x squared plus 1. I get that by differentiating. So this is a proof question. How can I prove that uh, 3x squared plus 1 is always greater than zero? Well, I start with a known fact. This is proof by deduction. So I know that x squared is greater than zero. That's my known fact. So 3x squared must be greater than zero as well. And therefore 3... Actually, I need to change that, don't I? x squared is greater than or equal to zero. So 3x squared is greater than or equal to zero. So 3x squared plus 1 must be greater than zero as required. So the function is always increasing. Now, some of you might be saying, hang on a minute, what if I'd use the turning point approach here? Let's just do that. So I've got this. So let's just say we use turning points instead. So I've got 3x squared plus 1. I'm asking when does that equal 0? Um, 3x squared is minus 1. So x squared is minus third. All oh, right. So it's got no turning points. No turning points, so because um, x squared can't be minus a third, and uh, therefore we get the same answer. So, you know, if you'd gone the turning point route, you could have got the same conclusion. I think in this case, though, the inequality approach is a little bit more elegant. OK, so let's uh, return to uh, normal sort of questions. We're asked, when is this increasing and when is this decreasing? Um, and you might remember what a quartic looks like. We sort of talked about it when we were talking about the roots of functions. Um, and certainly I would use turning points to approach this one rather than inequalities. But don't forget you've got your calculator. So before I do anything, you know, I'd be crazy not to, to work out what the answer is before I try and get the answer, if you see what I mean. So I'm actually going to sketch this. And... Um, you know, I would strongly recommend that in any of these sort of turning point and increasing decreasing function questions, that's your first action. Now, um, this is a um, one of those graphs that, you know, perhaps I need to zoom in a little bit just to check out exactly what's happening. It does certainly look like there's a turning point here and that it's decreasing up to that point and increasing after that point. Um, so I'm just going to zoom out and just check there's nothing wiggly happening sort of up here somewhere. No, we're OK. We're OK. So I'm, I've got this sort of funny, it's a bit like a wonky parabola, isn't it? So um, let's, let's find that turning point. So uh, dy by dx. Well, go on. You see if you can find the turning point. So as expected, I just find a single turning point. Um, x cubed can be negative, unlike x squared or x to the power of 4. So um, I, I you know, work out that I've got a single turning point, and it's as I was expecting. So can I therefore just say, right, it's decreasing when x is less than minus 1 half and increasing when it's more? I think it's worth doing that extra step and just proving that what we've got here is a minimum. I know it's a minimum. I've got it on the calculator screen in front of me, but I think... I need to investigate the nature of the turning point first to sort of make my solution complete. So find nature of turning points. This is why I like doing this after um, second differentials. So d2y by dx squared um, is 24x squared. One disappears. And so when x is minus a half, and we're not interested in what the actual value is, we just want to know whether it's positive or negative. 
So uh, minus a half squared is um, uh, plus a quarter, so it's positive. Yeah, that's positive. And positive means a minimum. So I have demonstrated what I knew all along, that it's got a single turning point, which is a minimum when x is a half. So it's decreasing when x is less than a half. So it's before that, and it's increasing after that. Some of you would be saying, right, can't I have used the inequality approach? Absolutely, you could have done. So this, I want to, uh, with the inequality approach, you've either got to decide, are you going to look for when it's increasing or decreasing? So I'm going to look for when it's increasing. And it's very similar, isn't it? So we've got, sorry, minus one. So it's increasing when x is greater and decreasing. Now you could say, surely that's easier. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You're probably right, it's easier. But I, I sort of, I feel a bit more reassured by this approach. But that's a perfectly valid um, method, as long as you make it clear that you're looking for it's increasing. So it's increasing when, um, so therefore decreasing when x is less than a half. Yeah, both perfectly valid, neither take particularly long. I guess you can choose. Okay, last one. Um, so I am being asked to investigate whether this is, uh, when, sorry, when this is increasing and decreasing. And this is a sort of weird and wacky one. I've no idea what this looks like. Um, so first thing I've done, drawn it and oh dear so yeah there's this is a weird and wacky one so it sort of disappears off down to infinity here and then reappears here and then there's a turning point there but of course in terms of whether it's increasing or decreasing it's pretty straightforward isn't it because it's decreasing all the way here and all the way here until it hits that turning point so it, we're definitely just going to have decreasing below that value and increasing above that value how do we prove that well, go on, let me uh, pause and I'm going to do it both ways, turning point and inequality way. But just let me remind you that before you be do, do any of that, you've got to rewrite it like that, haven't you? OK, you choose your way and let's see how we get on. OK, so looking for turning points, I differentiated, rewrote it, hate fraction. So I multiplied by x squared, zero is your friend. Uh, added 1, divided by 8, cube rooted, so you get a turning point when x is a half. Um, I differentiated again, and when x is a half, that evaluates to be positive, so I know I'm dealing with a minimum. If I did it the um, uh, inequality way, I've just got the same dy by dx. Um, when is it greater than 0? I can multiply an inequality by x squared, just the same as an equation. Remember, the only thing you've got to be careful about is if it's something negative. But of course, x squared can't be negative, can it? So that's fine. I'm OK doing that. Um, add 1, divide by 8, cube root it. So whichever way you go, whether you decide that you've got a minimum at that point, um, so it's, you know, it's, it's that shape, although we don't actually know um, well, we do, but you know, let's pretend we don't actually know exactly what it looks like. Um, we know that, and, and this way as well, we get the same answer. So we get that it's increasing after the turning point. So it's increasing when x is greater than a half, and it's decreasing when x is less than a half. And that combined with your calculator gives you sort of three ways of getting that answer. So really, I'm hoping that you would be able to cobble together an answer one way or another. You don't need to do both. Um, and again, I know this looks like it's more work, but I, you know, I just I find it a bit more reassuring, but there's nothing wrong with the inequality approach. And I, I, I know many of you will prefer that. So I'm combining two things uh, now. Um, I am not doing a video for Thursday, as I've said, that's because I'm working in school on Wednesday and won't have a chance to make a video. Um, and also I haven't set your homework for a week or two. So what I'm doing for your 
regular submission task is actually giving you four questions to try. So it's sort of homework, sort of work to do tomorrow when you would have had a lesson anyway. So I hope you won't be grumpy about that. Um, but yeah, put this on the regular submission page um, I've, I've set up for you. Um, now, the it's from the textbook. The textbook does this before turning points. So if you look at its work solutions, it won't use turning points. But I, as you know, prefer turning points. But you can use either inequalities or turning points. Um, and the, the whole of the exercise is worth doing, but these are the four that I'd like you to have a go at and submit to me. Question two, parts C, D and F. And then question three. Question three, remember to multiply out the brackets before you try and differentiate it. And it uses this notation here. X is a member of all real numbers. It just means all values of X. OK, so that's a sort of combined regular submission, stroke homework, stroke work to do tomorrow when I'm not setting you a video. And you'll hear from me again on Friday.